I'm reviewing some more tech for makers. Another 3D printer. This time it's the Mingda Magician X. This was uh, very kindly sent to me by Mingda. They sent it for free but I'm not being paid um, to put this video up. Here's a quick bit of an unboxing just so you see what you get. It's packed in styrofoam which uh, not my favourite um, packing material but it did the job. It was very well packaged. Just lifting it all out. That's the base unit. And, uh, and there's the gantry, which was well in there. I tipped it up and it came out very easily. This has uh, dual lead screws on the Z-axis, uh, you know, dual Z-axis stepper motors, and they're linked at the top by a belt. You get a little bit of P, um, PLA and the little tool set. No clippers or scrapers. And there's some good instructions with this, really good. The first thing uh, you have to do is just check the voltage and that's in the um, back of the tool tray underneath this little foam insert. So you just pull that back and you check check that you've got the right voltage for your region. So that's essential that you do that. And uh, you get some little SD card slots and there's the connections on the front. Touch screen and there's the... Uh, eccentric nuts underneath so you can just adjust those and get get the bed running nicely you get a spanner for doing that you just tweak them so that they're running smoothly and there's no play on the bed you don't want them gripping too tight but you don't you don't want the bed moving this was largely pre-assembled as you can see there was very very little to do Three machine screws each side just to attach that uh, gantry to the bed. Very quick and easy to do. All slotted together very nicely. Very high quality mouldings on this. The base and the top of the gantry are injection moulded plastic. Um, the rest of it's metal. Just doing the connections here. It's got a nice deep um, x-axis uh, extrusion there metal extrusion connecting up the hot end and the extruder with these ribbon cables which are all nicely protected but it's quite a deep extruder hot end unit so the deeper x uh, axis extrusion makes a, a big difference makes it very stable and in fact, when it's built, the whole thing was very, very stable. It didn't seem to make any difference that it wasn't an all-metal frame. The important bits are metal. Plugging in the mains lead. And then you clip on the uh, filament holder, the spool holder. That can go on the left or the right. There's the tool tray. Just popping those away. Touch screen, and there we are. Really nice touch screen. Very, very clear. Very intuitive menu. And it's just going through its self leveling uh, process. All fully automatic. You can't manually level the bed, there is no facility for it. You are relying on that um, automatic bed leveling. A brand new spool of filament to put in it. E-Sun PLA Plus, modified PLA. In this lovely purple colour that my daughter chose. Then I'm loading the filament. Which is very simple. Just go onto the extrude a bit and hit load. And it feeds itself in. Keep tapping load. And it gradually goes through and you can see it extruding out the end there. Get the supplied full size SD card. I've just put it in my card reader on my Mac. And here's a model I made um, last week, in fact, using Nomad Sculpt on my iPad. And this is my big fat bullfrog. I then import this model into Cura. Cura, in the, and this is the Beta 5 version. 
and there was actually the profile for this printer already in there built into the uh, Cura. You just have to find it and add it as a non-network printer. Just checking the settings. I did miss a couple of bits on this first print that I needed to adjust. The line width was slightly out on the default settings on Cura. I'm just working my way down. I printed this at 215 degrees nozzle temperature, 60 degree bed temperature. And then you slice it once you're happy. This model prints really well without supports, which is always nice. And there's the preview of it. This is then put onto that SD card, which you then eject, and you then put it into the front of the printer. Then you uh, work your way through the menu. You select the SD card, find your model, hit it, and then it automatically starts the printing process. You can see it's got the baby, set baby step adjustment bit there, should you need to. And in fact, I did uh, start this print and then restart it because I'd got the uh, Z axis offset slightly wrong. I just dropped the nozzle a bit using the baby step thing I did that. It's got very simple up and down control. Just uh, extruding that first line and then it starts doing the skirt. I think it did three passes but it's going down really well on the bed. It's all sticking nicely and it is perfectly even. That automatic bed levelling is really working well. Here you can see the first layer still going down. All really well adhered to the bed. A bit of a speeded up footage now of various uh, stages of the print. You can see the infill. I think it was 15%. And he's beginning to appear. It's quite, it's fascinating to watch. That's it, print done. And he's looking good. Tiny bit of stringing, but that was easily removed. But I was very, very happy with that. And then I uh, printed one of my cheese fridge magnets, one of my designs. It's another good test of a printer. It's got some nice flat faces and uh, a lot of scope there for ghosting. But there was no ghosting and it printed perfectly. Really nice print. And uh, also had the advantage of once I'd fitted the magnets in the back, it could be put on the fridge and complete my cheese wheel, which is always good for my OCD. But there we are. That's my filament cheese wheel. Now I'm printing a vase I've designed. Uh, I designed this in Shaper 3D, and it's my pineapple vase. And you'll note I'm using a raft. Um, I just find that a raft with these single wall uh, prints works well on these glass beds you've got less chance of breaking the print trying to get it off a little bit of uh, speeded up footage and there it is my pineapple vase i'm really pleased with this design well this uh, print came out just about perfect it's about as perfect as you could want really it was pretty well flawless and here it is coming off the bed. And the advantage of using the raft is you can get an instrument underneath that and lever it up without risking damaging the vase. And it then peels off the vase really easily. But I would recommend that technique on a glass bed. But really happy with the quality of that print. And I'll try and make that design available on uh, Thingiverse. 
Here I'm reprinting the frog with the settings improved and I've supersized him. Some more speeded up footage showing the printing process. There it is, just coming to an end. And there he is, very happy with that. Tiny bit of stringing there, which I can probably get rid of by increasing the retraction settings a bit. But very happy with my print, very happy with my design. And now switching to this Airy One Ultra Silk Dark Gold Filament. And I'm printing another one of my uh, 3D designs. And printing the froggy again. You can see there's a little bit of stringing there between his, uh, his eyes. I then thought I'd try some flexible filament. So this is some TPU. And I'm just uh, printing out a ring just as a demo piece. And uh, the direct extruder worked really well with this. And that stuck to the bed really well. And it came off the bed really well. We got a bit of stringing there, but that's TPU for you. And uh, it is rather old TPU and probably needs drying. But yeah, it seemed to uh, handle whatever I threw at it. So very, very happy with that. Well, I've spent a few days with the uh, Mingda Magician X and I have to say, very impressed with it. A uh, good bit of kit um, and it was easy to set up. It certainly would be ideal for um, beginners uh, because the actual build was about as simple as this style of printer could get. Um, the no bed to you know no bed leveling it's all active automatic bed leveling there's no option for manual bed leveling um which is is good in many ways because it's very very simple obviously if there's an issue with the bed leveling then you can't use the printer you haven't got that manual leveling option but it worked really really well it's got um a glass bed which is very very flat and the adhesion to it was really really good almost too good at times I uh, did the old freezer trick with a couple of the models I printed where I took the bed off and put it in the freezer and that chills it down and then the models pop off really easily uh, with models with a smaller footprint it's not a problem I, I in many ways I love glass beds because they produce a lovely flat base to things um, but in, in other ways I prefer the steel flex beds because it's easier to get stuff off. Um, they've both got their advantages and disadvantages but this didn't miss a beat. I didn't have a single failed print. Um, everything printed beautifully including my giant bullfrog model that I've designed um, which I was very pleased with. A lot of these models that I've been printing I will put on Thingiverse and I'll try and put some links in the description. So my froggy will be on there. I, this was the first one I printed. There's a little bit of layering on that, but uh, I realised that the Cura profile, I'm using Cura 5, the beta or beta version of it, and I realised that the default settings on that are set for slight over extrusion, it's 0.44 millimetres, and uh, I think that contributed a little bit to the layering on this one. So I changed it to 0.4 to match the nozzle for this one and this is an incredibly clean print. I'll put some stills up at the end so you can have a look but a really really clean print. I was getting a tiny bit of stringing here and there but it's the really really fine stringing which just rubs off and I'm sure I could mess about with retraction settings and improve that a lot. Uh, I, and the other thing is I am printing these filaments at the higher end of their temperature scale. Uh, I was printing this at 215 degrees because I'd rather have good layer adhesion. I don't want a model falling to pieces trying to get it off the bed. But really good. This is the eSun PLA Plus filament, which I find very, very reliable. Uh, really clean prints, easy to use. And the layer adhesion is really good. It's um, 
sometimes it's almost too good it's you know quite difficult to remove the support structures and uh, the i tested out the printer with spiralized or vase mode with another one of my designs i designed this on shaper 3d this is my pineapple vase this is about mark 8 <laughs> version of this that i designed uh i did some other versions a few weeks ago before i got the uh the magician x and it's uh some of them were the angles were just too extreme for spiralized printing um because it's just a single layer there was just too much of an angle this i've optimized and it print this is close to perfection this print it's faultless really it printed so nicely. One thing I do with these vase prints is I, I now use a raft uh, when I print these on a, a glass bed um, because it's very easy to break these because they're only a single line thickness, the walls are. It's very easy to break them, trying to get them off a glass bed. Where, uh, if you, whereas if you've got a raft on the glass bed, it's very easy to get a spatula or a chisel underneath that raft and lever that off the bed and then the rafts generally peel off the base of these very easily and you, you've got much less chance of damaging this trying to get it off the bed it, it's not an issue on uh, the PEI flex beds um, you can just flex the bed and they pop off but with a glass bed it, I'd recommend a raft I found it works really well um, printed some uh, silk as well this is Eri one ultra silk uh, this is the dark gold which is a metallic brown really uh, it's almost bronze color um, I think there was a little bit of moisture in this because I was getting a little bit of snap crackle and pop when I was printing it but that's come out really nicely this was a project for my daughter at a brownie thing that she goes to they were building rockets as a craft project and this is a, a bog roll rocket toilet roll rocket and i designed a top and a bottom for it uh, and i did those on shaper 3d and printed them and you can see very very smooth um lovely prints really nice quality and there's dollop dollop the alien um with his tongue hanging out um, and he does look like a dollop dollop of something but uh, yeah he came out well he'd probably look better a bit more supersized um, I probably won't bother putting him on thingy first yeah but my uh, my overall thoughts on the printer are extremely good it's there's no such thing as a plug-and-play 3d printer you have to have a little bit of knowledge to use them uh, and you'll quickly gain a lot of that knowledge and experience uh, for instance the Z offset the baby steps how low you want the nozzle to print to get that good first layer um, I had to I stopped the very first print on this and reset it slightly uh, just so that because it just to close it because I wasn't quite getting enough squidge on the first layer it wasn't quite squashed enough uh, but you soon pick up what you need to do and the baby steps on the touchscreen very very simple the touchscreen is excellent very responsive works really well very intuitive menu the only issue i had with it was that when you're selecting the model to print they're very close together and it's easy to touch the wrong one especially when you've got big fingers uh, but it was really nice touch screen and as i say the the bed leveling with the auto bed leveling was amazing the first layers as you'll see in the video went down so well every time um faultless a direct drive extruder uh, really good um, it gives you a lot more options I did print with some TPU which is here somewhere uh, this was just a random ring just to try it uh, the outer walls really nice uh, the inner wall had a lot of stringing but you get that with TPU and it was the way it been sliced really uh, but uh, and it is quite old filament it needs drying but yeah printed tpu without a hitch um yeah i was very impressed with the design dual lead screws is a big big benefit makes it a lot better um 
the only thing I would like to have seen really was an all metal frame. Some of this is uh, injection molded plastic, the base and the top of the gantry uh, is all injection molded plastic, but it is very rigid and it doesn't seem to affect it at all. It's, it, it feels very, very solid and it certainly hasn't affected the prints. So I really don't think it's an issue. Uh, yeah, like I say, lots and lots of features really. For the for this price point, it's amazing. You've got colour touch screen, auto bed levelling, direct drive extruder, dual Z axis motors. Uh, you know, really, really top spec. Um, so uh, yeah, if you're after a bargain, easy to set up printer, then this is the one. You know, certainly very good for beginners. Really, really good. No good if you're one of these people who likes to uh, pimp their printer and do upgrades and uh, and modifications because really everything's done on this. It's a modular design. It's it's all it's ready to go straight out of the box. You, it's not like some of the other ones which uh, you could modify if you wanted, but you, you wouldn't want to modify this. Um, print uh, nozzle temperature goes up to 260. I probably wouldn't quite print at that temperature because the PTFE can give off nasty fumes if you get it too hot but certainly up to 240 245 possibly um, and in fact most of the filaments you're going to want to print on this you're not going to need to print hotter than that if you want to print hotter than that you'd need to put this in an enclosure I suspect a lot of the people who would be buying this printer probably wouldn't be going down that path anyway um, it's just a really good um printer for as a first printer and good for you know it's almost as plug and play but none of these as i say are plug and play totally you've got to do a few adjustments you've got to uh, know about slicing software and things like that but would i recommend it definitely i'll leave some links in the description and i'll be back soon with some more videos Many thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, especially if you got this far through the video. Here's a few stills of the uh, of my creations, very pleased with how they came out. And I will get round to uh, putting these models on Thingiverse, uh, so that you can print them yourselves if you want. The pineapple vase is um, a very good test of a uh, printer really. Here's a few pictures of my fridge magnet, my cheese, and you can see how good the print quality is on that. No ghosting, nice top layer. If you want to purchase one of these printers, check out the links in the description, and there'll be an affiliate link there. If you use that to purchase your printer, I'll get a small commission, which helps fund my channel and would be very much appreciated. I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. More rubbish coming soon. Please like, share and subscribe.